You're listening to The Manning Report with your host, James David Manning. The news behind the headlines. That everybody knows that Tribulation Trump is a con man. Now hold on, no, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Everybody knows that Tribulation Trump is a pathological liar. Everybody knows that Tribulation Trump is a a public degenerate, especially you Southern Baptists, especially you gully washers down there in West Virginia, especially you bio dwell, bayou dwellers, especially you plain dusters in Oklahoma. Y'all know that Tribulation Trump is a con man. You know it. You know it. He ain't never been fit to serve president. You know that. You know it. You know it. You know it on Fox News. You know it when you sit up in the Southern Baptist Church with your hymnals and your big fat belly, cag belly deacon sitting on the front row. You know that that boy is a predator. He's a sexual predator. His wife accused him of rape, and he gave her some money. She dropped the charges. Everybody knows it. He raped a woman on the airline, grabbed her by her breast. Everybody, you know it. You know it. You, everybody knows that Trump is a con man. Liar. Anyway, so Joe Walsh was on MSNBC the other day, right? Here's what he had to say about that entire process. And Joe Walsh and I used to be partners in the, the, the stating that, that Obama was a birther. The long legged Mac Daddy, well, Obama was, was not born in America. And he wasn't. He wasn't. Joe, a former congressman and now radio talk show host was lost his radio talk show host. Show. But we both used to chase Obama up and down Main Street because Obama was not born. But now Joe Walsh, who voted and supported Trump, listen to what he's got to say. Go ahead, roll that clip, Mr. Engineer. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Here's the deal, though, Joe. Look, I care about the debt and the deficits. The tariffs are stupid. This election's about Trump, period. This election is a referendum on him, the man. He's unqualified. He's unfit. He's a child. He's reckless. He's erratic. He's a narcissist. He's mean. He's cruel. He lies every time he opens his mouth. And everybody knows it, all you Southern Baptist deacons and preachers and choir members and missionaries, all you evangelists, all you Salem media patrons, you all know it. You all know that he's a con man. You know he's a, every time that boy opens that filth trap called his mouth, he lies. You know it, you Jaffe, poor white people, you dirt farmers down in Arkansas. You know it down there in Mississippi. You know that Trump is a con man. You know it. You know it. He's the lowest piece of, well, I mean, we've never seen anything like it. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. So what y'all gonna do? What you gonna do? You can't hide it. So let me ask you this. You know, you know that he is. The world knows that people in Europe knows that he is. People <laughs> around the world, Putin knows what he is. And not only do you know that, but all y'all know that Russia, that Vladimir Putin and the Russian cutouts put that boy in power, that they stole the election. You racist hypocrites running around here. And I like to talk to Joe Walsh about this as well. You racist hypocrites running around here knowing for true that Obama wasn't eligible to be president, for he was not legally born, constitutionally ineligible. But you gully washers and dirt farmers in Mississippi, you know that Russia put Trump in office. You know it. You know it. You know it. And yet, talking about God sent him. Boy, the Lord got a hell for y'all down there in South Carolina. In Georgia, in the Panhandle of Florida, God's got a hell for y'all out there in Ohio and Indiana. God's got a hell for y'all that is too hot to trot. I'm telling you, talking about God sent this pathetic, this pathological liar, this rapist, this sexual predator, this, this coochie grabber. This orange had orangutan sitting up there in your Baptist church. You ought to be. God's got a hell for y'all that's too hot to try. You know, everybody knows this about Trump. Everybody knows it. 
You know, you know, your children, Mr. Deacon, Mr. Preacher, they're looking at you. <laughs> they are looking at you going to the Trump rally, your grandchildren. They don't even want to go fishing with you no more. <laughs> Why would they? Because <laughs> they know that you know that Trump is a con man. Always have been. Always have been. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Brett Baer ran a piece yesterday where he brought on Joe Walsh um, and, and unearthing the same thing that every last one of you gully washers, every last one of you plain dusters from Oklahoma, every last one of y'all, all y'all know that Trump is a public degenerate. Everybody knows it running around here talking about God sent him. Anyway, Mr. Engineer, part two, Brett Baer. President Trump Fox is a News. new Republican challenger tonight, and he is not pulling any punches, calling the president an unfit con man. Tonight, correspondent Doug McKelway looks at the field of GOP primary opponents and possible opponents. I helped create Trump. And George, that's not an easy thing to say. Conservative radio talk show host and former Congressman Joe Walsh is the latest Republican to announce a primary challenge to Donald Trump. We have someone in the White House who we all know is unfit. Someone who lies virtually every time he opens his mouth. He joins former Massachusetts Governor William Weld, who announced his challenge in April, promising to restore fiscal discipline to Washington. They're spending money in Washington like drunken sailors. Delivering a similar message, former South Carolina Republican Congressman Mark Sanford. He says he'll decide whether to primary Trump around Labor Day. He will attend a Vice President Pence event in South Carolina tonight. I believe we're about to go over a cliff that would cause a whole world of hurt to folks here and now, as well as our kids coming down the line. And fanning the flames of intra-party discontent is former White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. His 11-day tenure in the West Wing was as short as his disdain for the president is long. Because he's acting in a way that's completely unstable. Each challenger faces huge hurdles. It's already late to muster money and a ground game. A recent Fox News poll shows Trump carries an overwhelming 88 percent support among Republicans. And each challenger has baggage. Weld was a non-factor in 2016's libertarian ticket. Trump could easily target his laid-back patrician style as low energy. Sanford might face renewed Me Too scrutiny of his lying about an extramarital affair when he was a governor. And Walsh's own undisciplined lips have let loose with a motherload of Trump-like offenses, accusing President Obama of being Muslim and tweeting, Obama got elected because he's black, not because he's accomplished anything significant. While almost no one expects any of these three to beat Trump, they may be able to inflict damage by changing minds, especially among swing state voters who may be exhausted by the near daily drama of the Trump presidency. Brett? We'll follow it, Doug, thanks. Everybody knows that Trump is a con man. Everybody knows that Trump is a pathological liar. Everybody knows that Russia put that boy in office. Everybody knows he's a public degenerate. Everybody knows he's a sexual predator. Everybody knows that he's a, a rapist. Everybody knows it. All you people listening to Salem Media, Fox News, all y'all sitting up in the Southern Baptist, you know it. We can understand it by Trump. He's just full of the devil. But what about you millions of white people that know this about this man? You know it. Your children are looking at y'all and wondering, what is going on with my grandpa? What's going on with grandma? Because they, they know, they four or five years old, they themselves can, they can watch Trump if they see him on television. In fact, many of y'all can't let your grandchildren in the room when Trump is on television. Because you don't know what he's going to say. Your grandchildren, your grandson is seven years old, can go online and find out more stuff about Trump that, and, and cocaine sniffed it and coochie grabbing than went on in Studio 54 in its heyday about Trump. They can go online, and yet you go sit there, grandpa and grandma. 
letting unmitigated racism, because that's the only thing your grandchildren can figure out the reason why you do it. You're racist. Because you damn sure would not give a black man this kind of support being a degenerate. You ain't no way. You ready to excoriate anybody black that comes away any, anybody accused a black man or something. Yeah, that's right. Let's, 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 uh, let, let's prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law. Never seen nobody like y'all. So Joe Walsh, <laughs> Anthony Scaramucci, I guess the thing is with Joe Walsh and Anthony Scaramucci, and Scaramucci in particular, Scaramucci, listen, when for the nine days that you were the press secretary, you knew that Trump was a low-life, public, pathological, lie, public degenerate. You knew it then. So you really don't, you know, you, 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 you're saying it now, but you should have said it then. And pretty much the same thing with Joe Walsh. This is um, this is absolutely unprecedented, I think, in the annals of 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 debauchery, of deceit, of 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 a, of, of a national disgrace, uh, of a, of a, of, a, of, a, of a religious vomit pool. This is this these white people, these Southern Baptists. These this this is a this is a vomit pool. They know that the man. They know that the man. Okay, so John, you say, well, Pastor John Kennedy was this and that. And you can even go back and drag up some doctor tapes that uh, J. Edgar Hoover pulled up on Martin King. You can go back and get that. You can go back and get it. Go ahead. Go ahead and get it. But it still doesn't change the fact that tribulation Trump is a is a vomit disgrace. And and your children going online <laughs> and, and watching y'all at these what, what, watching y'all at these. And by the way, you Jews, what is what, what is it with, with the, the Israeli Jews? Listen to this Netanyahu. Tribulation Trump walks into the tree of synagogue, tree of life synagogue, and pits, uh, sends one of his boys in there. He sits down and he reads Tribulation Trump manifesto. Here's Tribulation Trump. He goes into the tree of life synagogue in Pittsburgh, knocks off 11 people over there, including uh, 70 and 80 year old people out there that were just just came for worship that morning at the synagogue, and you Jews over there in Israel. And you got this Alan, Wayne Allen Root talking about Trip is the king of the Jews. Then he goes out to the powwow to a synagogue out in powwow, California, and he shoots three people, kills three people out there as well. These are, these are Trump boys. These are Trump boys shooting doing a, then, they, then this Trump boy drives from Dallas all the way down uh, to um, the passage El Paso, kills 22 people there, and y'all still ain't got no sense. Still ain't got no still. Still supporting it. This is really, I mean, you know, it's talking about mental health. It's not, it's not the guys with the guns that got the mental health problem. It's you Southern Baptists. It's you white people that got that got them getting the mental, that y'all got mental, y'all are mentally sick. <laughs> it isn't a shooter. <laughs> it's that fat deacon sitting on the front row of the Southern Baptist Church that's mentally sick. That's supporting Trump. Y'all the sick one. Y'all the ones that need mental health. Y'all the ones that need counsel. Never seen that. And these Jews over there, Dwayne Allen Root and these Jews, the king of the Jews, the second coming of God. I mean, I, I mean, come on. You've been around the church for a little while. Come on, come on. That's that. Okay, cool down for just a moment about the things I said. You're <laughs> calling y'all mentally sick because you are. You're mentally degenerate like Trump. Y'all, no, yeah, 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 you are. But... But, but think about this a second. You, you're a religious person, right? You've been in the Bible. You've been around the Bible, right? When Alan Root is, is saying Trump is the comparison to the second coming of God, I swear, it, 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 the second coming of God is going to be a pathological liar, a rapist, a sexual predator, a public degenerate, a con man, a bankruptcy king, an orange hat orangutan. Is that what the second coming of God is going to look like? Trump? I swear y'all are sick. Y'all are sick. <laughs> Trump is the second coming of God. <laughs> He's the second coming of God that we don't need no hell. I mean, I, I, imagine where your religious appreciation, your theological understanding is if Trump is an example of the second coming of God, this pathological degenerate, this con man, and everybody knows it. <laughs> 
with us. You white people. <laughs> Is that right? You, you white people down there in Oklahoma? You, you plains dusters, you gully washers in West Virginia? <laughs> you swamp dwellers in Louisiana. This is the second coming of God. Is that your estimation of what God in the first and second coming looks like? Trump! <laughs> I swear. I swear. Woo! Talking about a sickness. No, it's a curse. You people are desperate. You know, the other thing is, too, is that a lot of people say, well, you know, uh, if the economy tanks, these, these people who believe that Trump is the second coming of God will walk away from him. Now, y'all are wrong. You, you people in the media, y'all, y'all, you know, Jake Tapper and, and Anderson Cooper and all that crowd, Chris Matthews, Chris Hayes, y'all, y'all, y'all wrong, too. Let me tell you something about these, let me tell you something about these Jaffer people that support Trump. Trump could shoot a pregnant woman in the belly, in the belly button. She eight months pregnant. Trump could shoot her in the belly button on Fifth Avenue, and he would not lose one of these gully washers in, in West Virginia. Or these, he wouldn't do one, one of these planes us in Oklahoma. They wouldn't leave him. She shouldn't have. She had, she had, she had no been to been out there on Fifth Avenue in the first place. <laughs> Nah, the tanking of the economy is not going to call. These people, and can I explain to you what's behind all this? And I promise not to inflict myself upon you any further. The reason why these people are so desperate and cursed and blind is that they believe or they, they, first of all, they know that the Japheth man, you can call him the white man in America, is diminishing in his political, economic, social, and racial power it is gone. He's no longer. He's no longer dominant. He's no longer in, in the majority. His days are gone. They're over with. Now I don't say that somehow or another that I'm gleeful about it. But listen, I am the one who did it. I'm just. And I'm just an analysis. By the way, you know when I make these kind of analysis, don't you don't get mad with me. I'm just telling you what is. His days are over with. But he believes that Trump can re- resurrect him. He believes that Trump can put him back in power the way he was back in the 18th and 19th century and up until the middle of last century. He thinks that Trump can put him back in power again. That's what he thinks. But he's wrong. But because of that, he has no place to go. He has no place to begin to demonstrate morals and religious efficacy. He has no place to demonstrate ethics that are normal and that have been godly and that are globally accepted. He can't begin to display those kinds of ethics anymore because what's at stake for the white man that supports Trump is his very existence. In 10 years, he could be working on a plantation of picking iceberg lettuce out there in California and the Mexicans are running the show. He, he, He understands that. He knows that. He himself could be put on a plantation that he once ran, his grandfather's plantation. He could find himself picking cotton. And he ain't no way he gonna let the Bible or anything righteous stand between him and Trump trying to put the white man back on top again. And that's and that's what that is. That's all that it is. And everybody knows it. Except this. I'm James David Manning. I'm the Lord servant. And if you don't know it, you need to know it now. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro, or Anderson Cooper, or Rachel Maydow, or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly, sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.